Have you listened to them? All right, so joining us to the well, yeah, episode hours. 62 <laughs> of the TSR podcast, um, we were just talking. I listened to the episodes 58, uh, 59, 60, and 61 with the job of the hut auto asphyxiation. That cracked my shit up, man. Did you laugh as hard listening to it as you were? No, no, was no, happening? no. It was much better when it was happening, but it wasn't bad, <laughs> like, as a flashback. Are you still going to write that? Oh, yeah. All right, so today I'm joined by Mario Hirose, who came out and played laser tag with us, and as a usual, Richard Older. Woo! So, Mario, where can people find you at if they're listening to this? Uh, Mario.hirose, or if you're Japanese, Mario.hirose. Okay. <laughs> Dot com, or like, that's the that's website? Uh, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I might add you on Facebook, depending on how many mutual friends you have. <laughs> All right, and I'm also joined by Richard Older. You can find him at. Uh, at RK Older on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me at Love is Cthulhu on Twitter and DougXComedy.com. And um, we're talking about ideas. Basically. But as, so one, one question I had, which came up, which I, I loved, was we said with the bringer shows of like 10 people, which we're discussing bringer shows, that no comic worth his salt has 10 friends to bring to a show. Because <laughs> if you're the kind of asshole who gets up on stage and does, does comedy, you don't have 10 friends. Now, now, Mario might be the exception. Mario is like the nicest guy in comedy. <laughs> it's true. What do you think, Mario? Weigh in. I, you know, it's it just really has to depend on the venue, the the price of the ticket. No, 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 no. Not talking about that. Can a comic have ten friends? Yes. <laughs> no <laughs> lies. <laughs> yes, faith. <laughs> have you met comics? Leaving you, you out comics. of it. Mario's a nice guy in comedy. Leaving you out of it. Is it. Have you met anyone who you think would have 10 friends? No, like most comics are socially awkward. They don't have that many friends. Even the even the, some of the people that I would, whether it be male or female, not judging, that are, I go, okay, they look normal, they're attractive, they look like they would have been popular in school. And all of a sudden you start talking to them like, I, I don't have any friends. I'm like, what, what the hell's wrong with you? Because <laughs> they're comics. <sighs> comics are not meant to have friends. No, no, that's not true. What do you mean? We become comics because we don't have friends. Right. I, I, I don't think... I don't think it's the other way around. I don't think it's that comics can't have friends. It's that we become comics that we don't. It doesn't get any better. No. No, it gets worse. Because you're socializing people <laughs> just like you. So any chance you might have had a changing for the better is gone because all your worst traits are reinforced. I did, I did have somebody ask me that if I thought that the comedy was making my personal issues worse because, you know, because comedy comes from that place. Yeah. And she's like, does dwelling and all that stuff, do you think it's making it worse or making it better? I'm like, well. It's arguable. It's, it's arguable. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still a meme with Hannah Bell and Mary. I went to their baby shower and they told me that's still making the rounds. It's arguable. <laughs> What were you going to say, Mario? No, I mean, I would say that I've grown as a person. I am much more of a confident public speaker. Uh, I've made a lot more friends through this. Um, but that's not what we're saying. We're saying, like, like, but, like, so it, cause it can go, I mean, I mean, it's arguable. Let's, let's go this way. You can take the darkness, and by channeling it into comedy, you can be doing something useful with it and coming to terms with it in a healthy way. Or you're like, I need more darkness to fuel more comedy. Well, I, and just dive deeper and deeper. Well, I, I so my answer to that when she asked me, like my honest answer to that was I think it helps. Because ultimately it's a way of dealing with it. So like a, a number of us have a lot of depression and anxiety. And it's kind of a way of, of dealing with it. Mental health show December 1st. Plug. Right? We're doing a fundraiser for the Orange County Warm Line. Come on out and hear comics talk specifically about their issues. Well, granted, like a lot of my material, I, and I talk about my penis a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have any emotional issues with my penis. So. Well, I'm happy for you. I do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get along real well. Like you and your penis? Yeah, it's like conversations. Old, it's like an old married couple. It has opinions now. And <laughs> you don't appreciate me. 
Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, nah, I don't really feel, I feel like that today. <laughs> like, I'm, I, I'm taking the day off. I, I, you always complain, I don't give you any use. I bring you out, and now you want to play. Yeah. And I don't really ever talk about my penis in my everyday life, so it's like... I, Is I, this I, a good outlet for penis talk for you? I guess so. I, I, Ma- that, that's Mario's new podcast, Penis Talk with Mario. <laughs> Every week from 10 to 8. <laughs> and I've been trying to write clean, and then all of a sudden just more penis jokes come out. So <laughs> I think that's great. At least you found your market. Dick uh, jokes. Who knew that would work? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh brand new. Jokes for decades. <laughs> for, for literally millennia. There are dick jokes on the walls of Pompeii. I mean, you guys have heard my brain tumor a bit. I mean, that's a glorified dick joke. You know, yeah, yeah we heard, yeah. Right hand, so. That's true. But you yeah, get all the audience joke. sympathy beforehand. Right. You, you garner them. No, this is not a dick joke. This is a, this is a self-pity dick joke. <laughs> I mean, you know, like... Are most dick jokes self-pity dick jokes? I don't know. Right. By definition? I mean, yeah. you can joke about being too big. Fuck. That was like, no that was like, that was a like, joke about being too big. That was a no, high metro mother thing. Bit is about my penis being too big, so. That, well, no, it's about being cre- larger as a side effect, <laughs> which is a different thing than being too big. This is the end result, man. It doesn't matter. Sure, it does. No, it doesn't. Look, no one's trading a brain tumor for penis enlargement. <laughs> you know, my favorite testimony. Ah, there might be some people who might. <laughs> That's super. It doesn't make a difference. So the one testimony I'll give, and then I'll get, I'll stop talking about my penis. You're never gonna stop talking Why? about your penis. Why do you say this? Why, Why do you lie to us, Mario? At least, at least for this podcast, <laughs> you can't go five <laughs> minutes. All right. The, you have a girlfriend. Let's hear your penis testimonial. The, talk to <laughs> talk to her about it. Prior to dating my girlfriend, this girl that I was gonna about to hook up with, like you know, she brought out a condom. And she said, oh, this condom might be a little too small for you. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh, my God. That's like the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Okay. Yeah, I should have married that girl. You probably should have. Don't tell your girlfriend that. I had a girl tell me that she thought our sexual problems was because I was too big. No, no, listen, Fuck listen, both of no, you. no, 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 understand. I am, I, I am, I am on the... You know the, how we like this no, no, comment say no. the podcast? <laughs> Fuck that guy? You're both no, fucked no, that guy. No, no, I'm bring this up because I am on the lower side of average, but this girl's experience, I, I can't imagine who she was with beforehand oh, when she was like, you're too big. <laughs> and it's like, I'm like, what the fuck have you been seeing? And, and I know she was with the same dude for like three years before she dated me. Mm, must have been an Asian, but like ex-boyfriend. I don't know what I can't, I didn't ask. He was abusive. For, for she the, fuck, for oh man, I saw. Okay, I saw this well, before. Be but ha, have, have, have you guys dated um, girls who are on the rebound from an abusive ex? Um, no. Kind of yes. I dated a massive alcoholic who had night terrors and PTSD, but it's a little bit different. Okay, but but if you're if you're the rebound boy after an ex who's like abusive for two months, it's fantastic because you can do no wrong. Like <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. it's better than better than getting hit yeah or, or even being you know like you don't yell at me when i say i want to order something different for dinner <laughs> you ask my opinion about where we should go places you're not you're, bringing out a belt or a wrench i mean no no let's about verbally right i'm just like i want to hear your opinions <laughs> it's like you get credit for doing just basic human decency but then about two months in they're like you don't really care about me why if you cared about me You'd be mean to me and hurt me and yell at me and, and stop me from doing stupid things. And then and they go back to the guy who's abusive. But for two months, man, it's smooth sailing. <laughs> well. Or alternatively, months, right? after two months, their self-esteem has been restored where they realize they can do better than you. That's normally what happens to me. Oh, wow. This is all right. This was good while I was healing, but now that I'm better. Yeah, let me go back to someone that's just gonna beat my confidence down. No, I mean, like, yeah. they, no, sometimes, sometimes they go back to the old one. Sometimes they actually move on and they're like, no, no, I'm ready for a healthy relationship yeah, and can, this is not healthy. I can <laughs> happily say that all the women I know who moved on from me, who moved on, moved on, all upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it what's an improvement. I'm like, right on. Happy to help. That's the premise of one of my sets that you judge yourself by the, the guy that the girl leaves you for. If she leaves you for something better, you're doing okay. 
it's like she's you for saying worse yeah, that you have to, to talk about. Some of our bars are real low, so it's not a huge upgrade. It depends. <laughs> I'm a poor as fuck comic. It's not a big upgrade. They have a steady job. <laughs> but you're doing creative. You're you're creating things. That matters. No one gives a shit about that but us. <laughs> no. I haven't gotten any tail because I was funny. Sure you have. You've only gotten tail because you're funny. What do you think? You think it was your features? She's like, man, I really want to bag a meatloaf lookalike tonight. Yeah, that has happened. Maybe she's got a thing for Pixar movies. <laughs> oh, 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 man. By the way, the, the Halloween costume was my favorite moment of the roast battle. I know you lost, but I was so happy when that moment happened. It was awesome. I, my regret is, one, I didn't do that at the end of the roast. Oh, right. It would have been a huge hit at the end. And then, two, I should have hung everything like in a hanger when I presented to you. So, like, here's just a bag of stuff. Oh. So, I think the presentation... Like no, no, I don't, I don't think that's the I think the timing. I think you shot your load, as they say, way too early. Okay. Like, you had your best bit to open, and then nothing you did after that lived up to it. Right. That, well, yeah. If you finished with it, I would have lost. No, because I've watched it. I've watched the Rose Bell, and you got no good reaction to anything after. Like, you got a great reaction to that, and that's why Richard won. And I went for some really personal history with you. And I figured, like, no one had enough of that background to where, like, they're like, just didn't relate to it. Well, also, there's people who are new there. They didn't I know. Almost, oh, I almost <laughs> ran at one of those jokes by you. Because I was like, I don't know if he should mention this. And you know what? I'm going to make it as vague as possible. So that was a good roast battle. It was good. But... A lot of people didn't know the four months of build-up for the payoff of the up joke. Like, it was really funny to me and Richard and a bunch of other, some other people, but there was also people in the audience who'd never seen that and had no idea what you guys were talking about. It was awesome, though. It was great. You know what I'm saying? But like, it was a great so move. I was surprised that you... Not, I, like, I could thought it could go either way, but I was surprised how much, how large the margin of voting was for Richard. Yeah. So I was like... I thought about, like, what happened? Because it was not close. Yeah, because I, I, I agree. I thought it could have gone either way. It's, that's what I thought, and so I was, but like, but like, yeah, you, you brought thought, up. I'm like, but I think that what, I think I we really I did had it. A good chance to lose. Like I, I was prepared to lose. I feel like the order of things. If you had done the, the 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 costume last or next to last. Anyway, moving on from our analysis and critique of the roast battle, because <laughs> that's what people came here for. Our fours of listeners. Yeah. Well, at least those fours of listeners are probably familiar. Man, was it? Um, the, the awkward fight scene has 49 views in a week. That's probably driven by Mistress K. Yeah, pretty much. And her her Asian following. Her India, in India. India, India. Yeah, her, her, her 50,000 followers from India. It seems like a lot of them were at uh, laser tag today. They were a lot <gasps> at laser tag. Oh man, some girl they were ran, representing. Some girl ran into me, like literally, like was going full tilt and ran into me as I turned a corner, and I'm like, no running. And but I didn't know it was a girl until I saw like them get up off the floor, and I was like, oh. It's I'm like, it's like the only other white guy there. I turned and left. <laughs> You're like, I gotta go. <laughs> You're on your own, bro. It's like, oh, you just show the check. <laughs> not going well. I'm going to turn and go this way <laughs> pretend like I didn't see that shit. No, she got up and she apologized. Yeah, good for her. Well, I mean, but like, I don't know. There's a, there's a reason for no running. It's a dark place. There's a lot of people. There's sharp corners. It is not a good place to be running around. And you're wearing sunglasses. In there. Yeah, that's a look, man. I always wear sunglasses except in court because judges do not, do not dig the sunglass look. Oh man, I went to the DMV today, renewed my license, and they're like, you gotta take your glasses off. I'm like, fuck you! This is my face! They're part of me. They weren't having it. I had to take my glasses off. It sucked. Don't make me. Is it a Jim McMahon thing? Like, sensitive to sunlight, or is it like a. It's a fucking hide as much of my face as possible, man. Look in at his face. In the last podcast, we were talking about it. Yeah. That I decided that shaving my beard was a mistake. Oh. It was doing a lot of heavy lifting for my appearance. It was. And he was talking about how his sunglasses do the same. Like it draws attention. It, it hides. So you're not looking at the other stuff. Anything you can hide is to the good. I'm very jealous of your beard skills. 
<laughs> yeah, I can look like I live under a bridge. But you can't grow a big beard? I can't grow a beard. I'm sure you could try. I can grow a very 80s stash, but that's about it. <laughs> and I've seen the movies. I've seen the Bruce Lee movies. You can have like a long beard, man. Like Pai Mei from Kill Bill? Or whatever, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> I haven't seen That'd Kill Bill. Awesome. Oh, you haven't? The movie's great. It can't be great. I saw I saw the first part. I thought it was great. I love those oh, movies. It was fun. such a blatant homage to like martial arts movies. It's Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. No, but I did on YouTube. I watched the one scene I liked. I liked the fight, the, the knife fight with the black girl while the kid's coming home from school. Oh, yeah. Um, the, that's a good one. The sword fight at the end with Cottonmouth with Lucy Liu, that's a good scene. Yeah. No, it isn't. You guys are talking, talking <laughs> just crazy talk. And even the Bruce Lee, like, uh, homage when he's fighting the Crazy 88, that's a good scene. No! Oh, yeah, the Crazy 88 was a good one, too. Uh, any, per, any scene where when a person, like, fights, like, you know, 50 people, I am out. I'm that's like, like, fuck this stupid shit. Old, that's crazy, Kung like, bubblegum, western, kung fu, 70s yeah, movie. Yeah, I hate all that shit. Oh, well, then you're not going to like that movie. I you're know, which is what I'm saying. <laughs> Did we miss that point? No, I just, you know. Like, I like Pulp Fiction because a lot of one-on-one -on -one fights. I, one -on -one I thought your fights. taste may have been better, and I was wrong. It's oh. fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, just because like, you're willing to walk and watch some stupid-ass shit and be like, well, it, it could never happen, but it looks cool. Yeah. Sometimes it's just fun to watch. Listen, I want to know about your voyeur sex tendencies, okay? <laughs> I want sure to do. I want to see shit that I could do. <laughs> all right? That's why I don't watch porn. <laughs> you know, if, if Richard could wheelbarrow some chick, like, I'd be like, you know what? Good for you. <laughs> like, I, I would watch that just because to see you do that. So. You know what, man? That's a challenge. <laughs> no, it's not. You know like, Don't do that. I'm going to set a camera and go, we need to make this position. Just so I can show my friend I could. You know what? And, and if I saw your penis because of that, I won't even be mad. Awesome. I'd be like, good job. Well, hopefully you won't because it'll be buried somewhere. Good well, life. you brought it back around, man. We're back. <laughs> That's why we're about penises right anymore. Penises. <laughs> On that note, that brings an end to the saddest episode of Theater Score Rejects. It's not sad. It's so sad. Not sad. So sad. Right, it started off good. Reference. We just had a weird laser tag. I'm gonna find a chick to wheelbarrow. Oh dear God.